Welcome back, everybody, and check it out. You're looking at one of the northernmost towns in the United States, and in a matter of days, that kind of glow, mm. that little bit of light that you see there mm -hmm. in Barrow, Alaska, will be out of here. The whole town will remain in the dark for more than two months. Talk about SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. Uh, <laughs> it's got to be tough up there, right? Yeah. The average high temperature is below zero from December until early spring as that sun angle starts to come back. So we've got winter weather expert Tom Nizzle here. I mean, this is the end of the light for a barrel. Yeah, it is. And boy, once that sun goes down, it's going to be down for a while. And we and can talk about how that happens and why that happens. Yeah, it all has to do with the tilt of the earth and something we refer to as polar night. That's a night that lasts 24 hours. This has a big impact on developing snow cover in the cold air that you see across the north as the winter progresses. So there's the tilt of the earth there. And as the northern hemisphere tilts away from uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sun, mm -hmm. then you're going to see a period where you will have 24 hour darkness. And, you know, even as we may be closer to the sun on that approach, that tilt is so important. So you, you don't have the sun hitting that part of the globe. The cold air continues to build up and, and expand across that area. Yeah, and Barrow's one of these population centers. You know, they're just north of the Arctic Circle, right? So it's really fascinating to see how this takes place. So let's go and see if we can move this ahead here. And we'll put our... Uh, we're going to put that in play now. There we go. We're going to take a look at our hemisphere. Now, this is fascinating here because what we're going to do, Mark, is we're going to start at equinox. This was in September when the sun was at the equator. After September, the sun begins to dip south of the equator. And as it does so, when it gets to about 10 degrees south of the equator, this area under the shadow here is all under darkness for 24 hours a day. Barrow's sitting right there. Now, let's take it to today. Today, the sun is down, down about 17 degrees below the equator, the area of 24-hour darkness just north of Barrow. They got about three hours of sunlight today, but one week from now, as the sun continues its trek southward, Barrow goes into darkness. And it remains there. Until about January 22nd, so it's a long period of time. Nome gets pretty close. Nome at the winter solstice is just south of where that 24-hour time is. Barrow's in it, and they're going to be in it for a long period of time. This whole area continues to cool through the winter time. Snowpack builds up. It radiates more heat into, out into the atmosphere, and there's a positive feedback mechanism for the chilly temperatures that you see up here. And so uh, that really is the bottom line as to why we start seeing the cold building up near the poles this time of year. They're losing the sunlight. That's right. And then once we get to the 21st, the sun begins to trek northward again, doesn't it? And it will continue to do so all the way until we get to the spring equinox. And at that point, we'll begin to see the sun once again at the North Pole. And, and they, they're, you know, people in Barrow must wait for that day when the sun <laughs> crosses back through. It's party time when they get back to that because it, it, is, it is really something. Now, here is that line. This is the farthest south that 24-hour darkness gets. And you can see how cold the temperatures are up here. And you can also see the snow cover that develops up here. And by the way, right now, extensive snow cover across Siberia, not as much across North America. And Tom, so this is right now. That's not necessarily where there's already 24-hour darkness. That's correct. But there's already enough uh, darkness. There's only, what, four hours of light in Barrow, so the the, the cold is building. Very little time to get any warming from that little sunshine. And now, Mark, what we've got to look to is some type of uh, some type of process to get that cold air down into the states. And that cold air comes at the expense of a big ridge in the west and a trough in the east. And we're just not seeing that pattern at this point. Yeah, in fact, it's been almost the opposite with continued storminess and a big trough over the west and then a ridge over the rest of the country. Yeah, and if we draw right across here, look at what we refer to as almost like a zonal flow, just little short ways here, but nothing coming out of the Arctic right now. We're going to have to wait for a period of time before we can get that good shot of Arctic air or polar air down into the states. And that's really the key. It's, it's not only getting the storm system in, but it's also getting the storm system from the right direction and getting those winds, the wind flow from the right direction to evict the air in to, get to the that, U.S. To get the cold air into the U.S., once you get the cold air, the storms have to track through it with moisture to provide lift as well and turn it into snowfall. There's really a lot that has to come together. And as we continue to see that stormy pattern for the Pacific Northwest, after a record-setting wet fall there, Something has to drastically change to get the opposite pattern into play. Yeah, and we're going to wait for that. We'll keep you updated on that. We keep hoping. Those who want winter are looking forward to that. So we'll see how it goes over the next couple of weeks. All right, we'll tell you if any of those kickers are coming your way. But coming up on Weather Underground, we are looking ahead.